Uh, hoi hoi folks, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name's Sean, aka Uncle Frogface, and welcome to today's video. If you're new here then welcome, if you're not new then welcome back. For those of you that don't know, on this channel we like to have fun with creativity regardless of ability. So if that's something that appeals to you, why not hit that subscribe button and while you're there, hit the notification bell as well and you'll never miss a video in the future. But on to today's video. So, originally I was planning to do a sculpt today. Uh, I've actually been planning to do a sculpt for the last few weeks, but my oven is kaput, it is no more, it has died, it's a late oven, very sad, which means that for the foreseeable future, polymer clay is off the table. I am looking at other ways to do the sculpture and I'm sure it will be up uh, sometime soon. But in the meantime, you get to watch me enjoy the wonder of cheap craft kits. <laughs> so Andrew and I were out shopping recently and uh, in you know, just doing our weekly shop in Morrison's and as we were walking around uh, we saw this. So this is the Creative Maker Kits officially licensed Batman wooden peg figure. And I picked it up because it's quite a substantial size box. It was only five pounds, but actually it's very light. So this just intrigued me. I've got nieces and nephews who are about the right age for this. This is for six and over. Um, and I used to do loads of craft kits when I was kids. So these kind of craft kits are really good entryways into different arts and crafts. So I just wanted to see the difference from craft kits when I was a kid to what they are now. I've done peg dolls before. I think anyone my age has done peg dolls before. Um, but I've never done a Batman one. Um, and I have these kinds of pegs as well. Uh, so I'd be interested to see exactly what's in this kit. So. That's what we're doing today. I'm gonna to turn around the, uh, the camera so we can get a good look at this and let's open it up and take a look inside. Okay, so here we are. This is the kit. You see we've got a real wood peg, DC sticker on here as well, logo, a very happy child on the back. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if this is actually the product. It looks like that might be Photoshopped in, which is a little bit concerning, um, but, Let's open it up and have a look. Okay. Is that it? Anything else? Oh, empty box. Okay. So we have some. So I'll come to those in a minute. Thank <laughs> you. I'm going to reserve judgment, but okay, so we've got two envelopes, a big piece of kind of filler cardboard. Um, I don't think this is quite in proportion. I think this box is way too big for what's inside. Let's have a little bit of a look. Um, so in this one we have, okay, some little, little doodads shake everything out okay a pipe cleaner some some bits of yarn um some foam foam pieces a little cardboard piece and another foam piece okay so those are all of the accessory parts let's have a look in here so interesting that one was sealed that one not sealed Oof. Okay, so we have a wooden bobble with a, a Batman face on it, a peg, and a stand. Okay. Okay, right, let's let's have a look at the instructions. Um And number one, bent pipe cleaners, attach pipe cleaners, attach paper. Okay, so we're bulking out the body with this this piece of card. Um, wrap wrap with yarn. Go between the legs. Some black on the bottom. 
How are we doing the, the little ha wool, really? Yarn on this to make hands? Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's supposed to make this here. <laughs> um, that'll be interesting. Uh-huh. I, I, so all of these bits here, for, uh, I, I'm going to reserve judgment for right now, but I, nearly everything here I've got in my craft cupboard. Okay, Let, let's just get this underway. And here we are, and we're just going to follow the instructions as best we can, starting off with those pipe cleaner arms, and then getting that piece of cardboard filler in, untangling this yarn, and then starting on the wrapping. Um, Actually, starting this off was a little bit fiddlier than it first seemed, the knot kept coming undone. So once I got a double knot in there, it was absolutely fine, and we could just go ahead and start wrapping our little figure. Um, now, I did have reservations going into this, but, you know, I want to give it its fair shot and, and, you know, do my absolute best, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm giving it every chance that I can. Um, at the top of the card there, we kind of had quite steep corners, so the yarn just kept sliding off, which was a little bit frustrating, but I tried to make it work the best I could. Um, so the arms are really uneven, but they're easy to pull through. And then once we've got the body wrapped, it's down to the legs, and we're just going to do that figure eight, as it says in the diagram there, and just go backwards and forwards. And I've just kind of run the, the yarn from the back of the neck down the back of the body, because... I didn't know what else to do really um, so you can see we've got that that weird bit there but yeah that that's fine I'm, I'm just gonna carry on wrapping carry on doing the instructions as they say and uh, now we are on to the, the feet the boots and uh, same technique that figure of eight going back and forth with this black yarn I found it easier to kind of do it back and forth a few times and then push it uh, along the peg to kind of scrunch it all together. Uh, did have a splinter uh, sticking out through the yarn, which I, I try to I try to fix, uh, and a few little yeah, a, a few little tangly bits. Um, now I add on to adding all of the accessories, so the the cape that won't bend down, uh, the ears that are a little bit too big for the ball, and the ball that's a little bit too big for the peg. Everything was just a little bit too big you know nothing quite fit properly it all just kind of was very wobbly um, and now we're we're sticking piece of sticky back foam to yarn um, which I, I'm not even gonna mention here um, and now we're on to these these hands now you know I did say at the beginning uh, I, I wasn't sure about this and this is where the frustration really started to ramp up I tried and tried then it got knotted then I, I, I got frustrated with the knot being there I couldn't get it undone because of the fuzziness of the pipe cleaner and it was just too much so took a break came back uh, and I mean literally like a, a 20 second break uh, just to take a breath of fresh air and I just did this the only logical way I could think of tie a knot do a little wrap and then tie a knot again and then snip off any excess I'm just going to rip it, uh, those little bits just keep popping off, but we're going to do the same on the uh, on the other hand, uh, the, the utility belt there just coming away, oh dear. Uh, and I don't know whether it's appropriate to say, ta-da, but, ta-da, finished. Okay, so that didn't take very long at all. However, it is a very clear difference in expectation to <laughs> uh, reality. Um, I mean, there are definitely some pros and cons about this. So why am I even trying to get this to stick? Um, okay, let's go through the, the pros, first of all. So pros, everything is in the kit. Everything that you need is in there to attempt to make what is on the box. Um, 
the painting of the headpiece, I'm just going to pop that off. It's quite nice. It's very nice. Everything's cut very nicely. Um, I'm struggling to find pros for this. If you're a child and it's your first time doing this, um, I think you'd get frustrated, honestly. So let's look at some of the cons because there, there are actually a lot of them. Um, first of all, we are covering a peg in yarn and then attempting to stick things to yarn. Um, sticky, sticky things do not stick very well to cloth and yarn. That's why if you want to take some of the tack off of sellotape, put it onto a piece of fabric and the lint that comes up will stop it being some sticky. I even tried to stick this piece to itself at the back. It doesn't even want to stick to its, its own foam. The adhesive is just not very good. Um, there's gaps around the, the headpiece, the cape sticks out straight at the back. These are all the kind of minor things. Let's go on to the major things. Instructions. These are incredibly vague. Um, sure, it tells you to not. It doesn't tell you how to finish anywhere. It doesn't tell you here, for instance, whether you should tie off this piece uh, and then start again. So when you finish the body, do you get a new piece for the legs or do you just carry on with that same piece of string? Um, the figure of eight diagram is nice and clear, but it doesn't tell you how to finish any of the pieces. So with the boots at the bottom and the end of the legs there, how do you tie off your piece of wool? Then you end up with little bits sticking out where you've had to try and tie it. The hands, the instructions for the hands, just do not work at all. You cannot wrap the end of a pipe cleaner in black wool and expect it to stay. We end up with these little fingerless mittens with little tufts sticking out because you can't do anything else. The piece of cardboard at the front, let me just take that off. Uh, the piece of cardboard, because it has sharp edges, you can't get the wall to stick to it nicely. So then you have bits of cardboard showing through as well. You do get enough wall, which is, is nice, but there are kind of gaps. The stand's quite nice. The main thing for me, though, is a safety issue with this, in that the peg itself is not very well sanded. I mean, there's a splinter sticking out there. I got a splinter myself. A child handling this would get splinters. Um, I mean, would I recommend this kit? If you hated a child, <laughs> then maybe. Um, Honestly, I, I don't think it's worth the money, and this is why I don't think it's worth the money. So I've just had a, a rummage in my cupboard under the sink and found this. This is a pack of uh, dolly pegs that I got from Amazon um, a few months ago for washing. Um, these were less than three pound for 24 pegs. I also have from my craft cupboard pipe cleaners. These pipe cleaners were, again, less than £3 on Amazon for 120 of them. Um, yarn is really inexpensive, although, to be honest, if you're going to be sticking things onto a peg doll, I wouldn't recommend yarn. I, I just paint it. The bead at the top is nice. I will give them that. I, I actually think I'm going to attempt to do my own one to kind of complement this one. Um, I'm not going to use the, the kind of same techniques they did. I think I'm going to crack out the milliput and the paint. Um, but yeah, let's do our own peg doll.
But in all seriousness, once that was all dry and ready to go, and that did take a fair few hours, Milliput takes about four hours to fully cure, it was time to get started with the painting. So I always start with kind of a, a base coat and underpainting. I don't usually use white, just because it can sometimes be a little bit tacky. Um, but this took a few coats and, you know, hitting it with the hairdryer between coats so that I could get a really nice, even finish. Now I'm just coming in and sketching out my design, uh, just in a mechanical pencil. One of my favourite mechanical pencils. Um, and, yeah, it was still a little bit tacky and it was bringing up the paint, but I wasn't worried too much because we're going to be painting over nearly all of the white paint. Um, and I think you could probably guess what character this is going to be. If you can't, uh, just wait till we start adding colour. And you will very soon, I'm guessing. Um, but I'm just going in and laying colour by colour and kind of starting from the the closest to the... So from the inside to the outside, if that makes sense. Like if you were painting a landscape, start at the back in the background and, and work towards the foreground. Um, so the background is kind of the, the shirt and the socks and then you'd have your waistcoat, jacket, whatever else on top. So you build up layers. Uh, so we've got our shirt in, we've got our socks in, now we're coming in with this uh, Viridian hue I think this is uh, and just adding in a little bit of a waistcoat and this uh, took a few layers as well, D just didn't want to sit very nicely over the white but that's fine, I had plenty of time uh, and now we're coming in with this lovely purple and this is, I'm nearly out of this purple actually, I think this might be a Reeves colour uh, but I really like this colour but yeah, so we're coming in with this purple for this uh, jacket colour. Uh, any guesses yet who we might be creating with this peg doll? Um, and again, just going over, making sure we get everything that we want in that colour. And between each coat, I'm making it with this hair dryer, just to speed up the process uh, and make it go a little bit quicker. So now we've got these kind of lavender uh, trousers. And this was just the same purple, just with a little bit of white. Uh, just to kind of get a, a bit of variation uh, so you can really separate each part of the clothing and now we have some green hair hmm purple suits orange shirt green hair I wonder I wonder yep we are painting the Joker I mean of course we had to arch nemesis of Batman and uh, I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to paint one of my favorite villains onto a peg doll. So with the face here, I'm just coming in, I want to add just a bit of shadow. So this is just a, a kind of, it's a mid gray, but it's more on the white side. I'm just adding in shadows for the eye sockets on one side of the nose. Uh, just so that when I add details on it later, it, it makes it stand out a little bit more. And now we're on to some of the detail work, so just some tiny little bits, so a few wisps of hair at the front here using the same green. And now with the red, we're going to come in and start painting that joker smile. My um, paint brushes are starting to, to fray a little bit, these, these little tiny ones. So I'm definitely, definitely going to have to invest in some more. Because obviously with our miniature master study series as well, I do need those uh, tiny paint brushes. So if any of you out there have any recommendations for uh, small paint brushes that might be useful. I know some of you are, are kind of model makers uh, and you know, do the war hammers and stuff. Any recommendations, leave them in the comments down below. I would be happy to take on your recommendations. So here I'm just adding some stripes for, to the trousers. Um, that horrible dirty rag there just so I don't get my fingerprints and paint over the bits of the doll that have been painted. Adding a bit of um, extra detail and depth into the hair just with some of that Viridian hue. Just kind of break up that, that big block of green. and cleaning up the smile a little bit and making the ear a bit cleaner as well or where the ear is going to go and of course we can't forget his little eyebrows We're just coming in and uh, again just just popping those in with the, a really thin paintbrush and just that same green we use for the hair 
So now this is a really fine paintbrush and just a little bit of black. And I usually don't use black in uh, in paintings for kind of details and stuff, but with comic book characters, I think it, it's absolutely fine. Um, you know, I, I know from my own experience inking stuff that that black just can make things pop sometimes. So just adding a few details where I think it's needed. Obviously, he still needs eyes. So we're going very simple here. Line and a dot. One of my favorite ways to paint eyes on things. Uh, just the little corners of the mouth and the chin and a few frown lines and then just a, a few streaks in the hair. And of course we can't forget his little shoes. Just add those buttons to the waistcoat. Again, just small little details every now and then. Okay, so once he's all dry, it is time to add his arms. And I've got this uh, lovely purple pipe cleaner, and I'm just gluing it to the back. And then I'm going to mark out roughly where I want the arms to be. And instead of wrapping yarn around the ends, I'm actually just going to use the excess of the pipe cleaners, hold it, wrap it a couple of times, and then wrap it around the ends. And then you get these little... Uh, like little pads at the end of the pipe cleaners. I think it works quite nicely. Little purple hands there. Now all we have to do is glue them to a base. This is just a, a bottle lid. And there we have it. You see I still need to clean up that glue at the bottom. The super glue didn't cut it, so the hot glue gun came out. I'm really pleased with this guy. Tell me what you think down below. Well, what can I say? We started with a kit which yielded questionable results, um, but it's prompted us to make something that actually I really like. I've got to do a little bit of clean up on the, uh, the glue at the bottom there, um, but I'm really pleased with this. And in fact, I think I might send a few pegs to some friends and uh, let's see what they can come up with. Raquel, I'm thinking of you in particular. Um, but as always, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and until next time, goodbye.